Hey everyone, time for part 3 now. So like I said before, my LPT Crypt PC is away for a while, so I'm going to try using the prepared files that I've made with my Windows 7 Virtual Machine. Um, although before we get underway, there are a few things I'd like to clear up. Um, for the past two weeks, I've been receiving insane amounts of private messages about the JTAG hack. Um, unsurprisingly, almost all of them have to do with that 10th Prestige hack in Modern Warfare 2. Along with a few other questions, so I'm going to try to explain everything. Um, first off, the most common question seems to be, and I quote, If I have a JTAG hacked console, can I do the 10th Prestige hack? And my answer is yes, but not with that consequences. Uh, the moment you sign into Xbox Live with that JTAG hack, you've pretty much just shouted, Hey Microsoft, so I'm running a modified bootloader, unsigned code, and now I'm about to run some modified games to demolish your online community. Insert demented slash evil lab here. Um, so from this point, give it about one week and you're banned. Um, I want to make this as clear as possible. Xbox Live plus JTAG equals ban. There's no way to stop this at the moment, and it's very unlikely that there will be at any point in the near future. And if you've already completed the 10th Prestige hack with a friend who has, um, shall we say, nobly decided to sacrifice his or her online gaming privileges, for your short term gain, you'll probably be very disappointed when you have your rank reset as Infinity Ward is presently doing. Next in a close second is, if I accidentally update my console to the latest dashboard, or my 360 has a dashboard in the 8000 series, can I downgrade it? Isn't there some other way I can install JTAG? Um, my short answer to this is no, my long answer is also no. But because when you update to any dashboard in the 8000 series, aside from the fact that the kernel you update to is no longer vulnerable to JTAG, an irreplaceable E-fuse on the CPU is blown, which uh, basically blacklists the vulnerable kernel. So that prevents any possibility of a downgrade. Um, and then there is, of course, could you host a 10th prestige lobby for me? Now, I'm afraid not, and for two reasons. One, uh, I don't have a JTAG 360, which has Xbox Live capability. Well, this is because every 360 I install the JTAG hack on, I make sure it's banned already because there's no sense in wasting a console. And second reason being, it's illogical to render a console permanently disconnected from Xbox Live for very, very short term gain in a single game. So now for some slightly less common questions. Um, first being, do I need a working DVD drive to do this? No, no you don't, but it would help, but you don't need one. Once I've applied the JTAG hack, can I find out my DVD key and flash it to a drive I bought on eBay? Well, yes, absolutely you can. That's one of the main purposes of this hack. Well, what are the secondary purposes anyway? And can I run Linux on my console with this hack? Yes, you can. Uh, the hack will install Zell or Zells, whatever you choose, and um, you'll be able to load Linux directly with that using your reject key on the drive. So it's kind of a convenient way to do that. Um, can I do dot .map modding in Halo 3 or in other games with this? Yes, you can. It's really quite easy. I'll probably make a tutorial later on that. Um, so anyway, yeah, I hope that helps everyone out just a bit. Uh, but of course, feel free to leave me a comment if you have a problem that you can't solve or a question which you need answered. So now that I've just talked for what felt like 10 hours, let's get to work. First off, we're going to need to dump the NAND. Do, to do this, you're going to need an application called NAND Pro, which I've linked you to in the description. Once you've got it, you can extract the NAND Pro folder from the RAR archive and drop it into your Drive C root directory. It, for the sake of simplicity, you can just rename it to NAND Pro. Before we can use the application, you're going to need to install the uh, application it comes with called Port 95NT. Um, I'm not sure if it works in 64 bit operating systems, I think it does, but I'm not totally sure. So assuming that you've already installed this, we can continue. So first off, we'll open up a, a command prompt. And we'll head to our drive C folder. Oops. And here under the listing of drive C, you can see we've got our NAND Pro directory. Um, so what we're going to do now is dump the NAND. The command for this is quite simple, NAND Pro. LPT because we're using an LPT port. If you're using a USB flasher, of course you'd use USB colon dash R because we're reading the NAND 16 because it's a 16 megabyte Xenon um, and then of course we have to name it so we'll call it orange1.bin 
Now, just press enter here and it'll start to dump your NAND, assuming that you've got all of your soldering done correctly. I'm not going to execute this command here because I'm using a virtual machine, which of course has no LVT port. So, uh, assuming that you have just pressed the enter button now, it will take about 30 minutes to do your first dump, after which you need to run the command again, however this time rename the output file to orridge2.bin and after that completes do it one more time just for safety. You should now have three dumps of your NAND. So now we need to compare these dumps under a hex editor. Now we've got all of our three dumps on the desktop we're going to head into our hex editor here and we will open up file one desktop let's go with orridge1.bin and file 2 or two.bin. So now we can have it compare these files. Scroll synchronization, just to make things easier. So as you can see, in my case at least, both files are identical. Um, if you did have two files, two dumps which were not identical, I'm going to show you what you would get. For this brief example, let's just uh, enable scroll synchronization and we'll open up file 1. File 1 is going to be orridge2.bin and file 2 is going to be orridge3.bin Now, as the moment you open it you can see that there are obvious differences here. All the differences will be marked out in either green or uh, yellow. So you basically just need to check your file, scroll down through it and point at any differences that you come across. Um, any differences at all will warrant another dump. If you continuously get uh, non-matching dumps, you may want to consider checking your soldering, just make sure nothing is wrong there, or if not, changing the mode of your LPT port or trying a different PC, um, because of course you do need to have matching dumps for this to work. Now that we know that original 1.bin is in perfect condition, we can run this through Degraded to find out if we've got an exploitable CB version. So to do this, we're just going to open up um, Degraders here. Uh, as I said in the description, you can get this on XBINs. Um, now before we can actually go and open up Origin1.bin, we do need to enter a key. I can't give you the key, but you're probably going to copy what I paste in here anyway. So once you've entered the key, just check valid beside it, and the file system start needs to be 39. So click OK. And now we can go and open up um, orridge1.bin. So desktop, scroll down here, orridge1. Now if you get this error when you attempt to open orridge1.bin, it means there's um, one number which you need to change in the um, bin file. So let's do that now. We just need to open up orridge1.bin in our hex editor here and we need to change 2004 to 2007 to 2004 to 2005. So now we can just save that and we will open up orridge1.bin once more. As you can see here it's given us the CP information it's a 5.7.7.1 version. This dump is from a Falcon console because I haven't been able to back up the um, NAND memory from the 360 in question here just due to the lack of the LPT PC. But uh, the method is the same regardless of whether you have a Falcon or not. So we're going to just assume for the purposes here that we are using a Xenon dump. Um, now there are a couple of things you want to note. Uh, depending on your CB version, you may not be able to install the JTAG hack. Although the chances are, if you have a console manufactured uh, before June 2009, you will not have the problem. So now we verify that we can indeed proceed with this JTAG hack. Finally, we're going to extract our key vault and configuration blocks from Orge1.bin, inject them into an XBR or Xbox Reboot binary, and uh, then flash it back to the motherboard, and that'll be our mod for the day completed.